Welcome into Mock Trial Masterclass, your guide to controlling the courtroom. I'm Luke and I want you to be a Mock Trial Master. Let's talk about how you can make that happen. Just about every mock trial case presents an opportunity for someone on your team to play the part of an expert witness. And having good expert witnesses is a key not only to making the jury think that your side of the case is better, but also to winning mock trial rounds and scoring well. It's also sometimes a difficult thing to do. So in this video, what we're gonna talk about is how to play an expert witness really, really well. Specifically, I'm going to give you my three favorite tips for being an outstanding expert witness that your team can rely on to be rock solid on the witness stand, both during direct examination and cross-examination. So you ready to hop in? Let's do it. My first tip for playing a quality expert witness is that you must be authentic as a witness. Now, I say this for witnesses in general. In fact, I think authenticity is one of the hallmarks of a mock trial master in general, whether you're a witness or you're an attorney. But I really think that for expert witnesses, it is as important as ever for you to be authentic. Now, let's think for a second about what that word authentic means. It just means an authentic or a real representation of something. You know, if I had an authentic Star Wars movie prop, Right, that would mean it was actually used in the movie. It's a real Star Wars movie prop. Well, when you're an expert witness, if you're playing a doctor or an engineer or you know someone with a very specialized skill set and knowledge set, you're not actually going to be that person. Right? I understand, we all understand, this is really an acting exercise. But what you can be is an authentic representation of that type of person. And so, for example, if you're playing a medical doctor, there are things you can do on the witness stand to make yourself closer to being what a medical doctor would actually look like on the witness stand. It encompasses, for example, uh, the way that you dress. You want to look like a real doctor on the witness stand, not a fake high school or college student playing a doctor. So, think about it. If a doctor is on the witness stand testifying about a medical case, Chances are they're not going to be wearing a lab coat and that thing on their head and, and a stethoscope and exam gloves because what would not happen in that situation is, is the witness or the doctor's in the middle of surgery working on someone and they go, oh, oh, crud, I got to go run to court and they run out and, and, you know, as if they were in the middle of a surgery, right? That's not how things work. A doctor's probably going to dress for court maybe in a suit and tie. If not a suit and tie, maybe a, a, a button-up shirt nicer than this one tucked in. Right, that's how a doctor's gonna look in real life. We're not looking for a Halloween costume here. And in a lot of cases, you're not looking for a Halloween costume, right? If you're talking about a psychologist, maybe they're giving an opinion about someone in the case's mental health, right? Well, they're not gonna look ridiculous, right? They're gonna be dressed professionally for the situation. So when we think about being authentic as an expert witness, it encompasses the way we dress, but it also encompasses the way that we talk. Right, so as an expert witness, you need to sound like the type of character you're playing. If you're playing a doctor, I keep going back to that example, but it's a, just a really easy one. If you're playing a doctor, you need to sound like a doctor. You need to use words that a doctor would use. And we're gonna come back more to the sort of education component of that in just a second and, and how to not confuse the jury while maybe using some big words. But you need to sound like a doctor. You don't need to be on that witness stand, hey, how you doing? And talking like you're you know, a hillbilly. By the way, I can say that because I'm from Tennessee and, and I know hillbillies, there's some in my family, right? So you don't want to sound like that if you're playing a doctor, right? You also don't want to sound like you don't know what you're talking about, right? When you use medical terminology, you want to pronounce it correctly, right? All sorts of things we can do as, as any kind of witness, but specifically as an expert witness to be authentic. It is huge to playing an expert witness. When you're on the stand as an expert witness, here's what I want to happen. I want the jury to look at you and think of you not as a high school student, not as a college student, not as a law student, but as someone who is actually that type of expert. You're not a student, you're a doctor. You're not a, a law student, you're a psychiatrist, right? Whatever type of expert witness you're playing, you need to be an authentic representation of that type of expert. 
Tip number two for an expert witness, you need to know your part inside and out. Again, this is a tip that I would give to any witness, but this one is especially important as an expert witness. When you're an expert in mock trial, you're gonna get a really tough cross-examination and you're probably gonna have a really difficult direct examination even though you're working with your teammate, right? You're both on the same side. There's a lot of information you're gonna have to convey to the jury and you're gonna have to do it really well. And that's going to require that you have a strong command of your character's material. Now that starts with going deep into your character's witness statement, right? Whether that's an affidavit or a report or something like that, you've got to dive in and know it backwards and forwards. Every fact in that witness statement needs to no longer just be in that witness statement. It needs to be up here in your brain too if you're playing an expert witness. But what I would recommend is that if you're playing an expert, you go beyond just reading your witness statement because in my experience, that's what separates good expert witnesses from great expert witnesses. Good expert witnesses know their witness statement backward and forward like we were just talking about, but the great ones take it a step further. Let's say you're playing an expert witness who is an expert in how refrigerators work. And the reason I use that example is because my very first year in mock trial, I had a teammate who did this exact thing. He didn't just read the witness statement, which it did have some good information about refrigerators. He dove in and did some in-depth research. He looked up YouTube videos for how refrigerators are put together. He studied diagrams on the internet for how refrigerators worked. He looked at, at piping. He looked at the electrical systems that made refrigerators right keep things cold. And all in all, at the end, when he took the witness stand, this guy was no longer a high school student, right? The, the background that he got, the research that he did, knowing his part inside and out the way that he did, allowed him to be authentic, right? This part of, of, of knowing your part inside out, like we're talking about here in tip number two, it connects back to tip number one of being authentic. But you know what else it did beyond just making him have command and, and seem like he really was that type of person? In cross-examination, when other teams would get up and try to question him and say, well, you don't know this and you can't tell us this and, and, and you can't explain this, he was able to look at them and say, uh, yeah, I can. See, in most mock trial competitions, you're able to, on cross-examination, bring up facts that aren't in your witness statement as long as they don't contradict your witness statement and assuming that the attorney actually opened the door for you by asking a question that would require an answer of that type. Now, I understand that might be a little bit difficult to think about and, and if it overwhelms you right now, don't fall too far down that well for the moment. But just know this, knowing your part inside and out through both a study of your witness statement and research beyond your witness statement is huge. Maybe you're playing a bomb expert, right? Find someone who you know in pyrotechnics that you can get on the phone and talk to about the way that these things work, right? You might not know a pyrotechnics expert, but I bet you know someone who does or you know someone who knows someone who does. So, so go work your connections, right? Make this happen because this is a big deal. Knowing your part inside and out as an expert witness, like I said a minute ago, is what is gonna set you apart from being a good expert to being a great expert witness. Before I dive into my third tip for expert witnesses, I wanna remind you that my book, Mock Trial Masterclass, is available for purchase on Amazon. And guys, this book is full of tips, not just for expert witnesses, but any type of witnesses and lawyers as well. Basically, I boiled down everything I've learned in my several years of competing in and coaching mock trial into one simple plan that is gonna be easy for you to understand. It's gonna help you take your team to the next level, whether you're in college, high school, uh, law school. This book is for you to help you succeed at your next tournament. Like I said, it's easy to understand. It's not gonna overwhelm you with big words or complicated techniques, right? If you're liking this video, if you like the videos on my channel, you're going to love this book. And if you wanna pick up a copy, you can click the link in the description on YouTube or in the show notes on podcast platforms. All right, final tip for expert witnesses, and this is a big one, is you need to be a teacher as an expert witness. Specifically, you need to be a teacher to the jury. As, as we think about this, I want you to stop for a second and think about your favorite teacher that you had growing up. Not the teacher that like let you play outside all the time or, or you know didn't actually make you do any work. I'm talking about the teacher that you learned a ton from that had a big impact on you. All right, so think about that teacher. My guess is that that teacher did not talk over your head. 
she or he didn't use big words that made you feel like you were less than or intimidated or made you feel like, man, I'm, I'm never gonna be able to understand this stuff. My guess is that even when this teacher taught you complicated concepts, they brought you along slowly and made sure that you understood them. And if they did have to use a big word or a complicated term, they immediately followed it up with an explanation or a definition that helped you understand exactly what they were talking about. Right? All of those things that I just mentioned, that is the hallmark of a good teacher. That's what good teachers do. That's what they're all about. And as an expert witness on the stand, that's exactly what you need to be all about. See, I've seen a lot of expert witnesses in mock trial over the years who took the witness stand and, and used it almost as an opportunity to show off their knowledge and use big words and say, well, isn't it cool that I know this scientific thing? And isn't it great that I know this? Well, maybe it is great that you know all, know all of that, but the reality is, is that a jury doesn't care and a scorer in mock trial who's overwhelmed by your presentation and feels like you're talking down to them or, or talking over their head, they're not going to like you. And if they're not going to like you, they're not going to give you a good score. What you have to do as an expert witness is teach the jury. You got to be just like that great teacher you were thinking about a second ago. You might have to use a big word every now and then again. That's okay, right? You're talking usually about scientific technical things as an expert witness. Define those words quickly. Give the jury something to latch onto, something that they're going to understand, right? Teach them, bring them along with you on the journey. Make sure that every step of your process has an explanation that the jury, again, can understand. That is your job as a quality expert witness. You've got to teach the jury. Some of the best advice I ever got as a mock trial student, this was very early on in high school when I had just started, was that you need to teach to the jury, talk to the jury on an eighth grade level. Now in real life, that's because unfortunately, the average education level of jury members is considered to be at an eighth grade level. But in mock trial, even though you're often talking to uh, attorneys in the jury box, or at the very least, mock trial alumni, help, having that eighth grade mindset and, and teaching to the jury in that way is going to help you get into the state of mind that you need to be in to teach the jury, to talk on their level, not talk down to them, not talk over them, but to talk to them, again, to bring them along with you on that journey. And if you can couple or, or pair that mindset along with authenticity like we talked about earlier and a command of your part by knowing it inside and out, I know for a fact that you'll be well on your way to scoring tens and competing as an expert witness at the level of a mock trial master.